Michaela McMahon is our next student. She is from Corning and attends Southwest Valley High School. Michaela is the daughter of Lana and Dean McCann, and her project is entitled Villisca Summer Day Camps. So how was your summer? Because my summer was the best one yet. I created and founded five weeks worth of summer day camps for the small town of Villisca. And I will talk more about that now. So how did this all begin? So I came up with a project that I wanted to do to bring more value to my community that hasn't had a summer program in over 10 years. So I felt like this was my spot that I could help this community. So by doing that, I started advertising for this project. So I went on the KCSI 95.3 radio station and talked about my project and ideas, and this was back in March that I started doing this. I had lots of phone calls about this camp, and they wanted to know more. They wanted to know how to donate, how, how they could reach me and to help with this project. So I created a Facebook page called Villisca Day Camps by Michaela McMahon. And through this, um, through this Facebook page, they were able to contact me, and they answered a lot of their questions just by looking at the page and the information on it. One of the first phone calls I got was from the Red Star Feed Coffee Club. And they heard me at 6.15 in the morning on the radio station, and they called me at 6.30. <laughs> at 6.30, they called me, and they wanted to donate $425 to my free summer day camp. So to make my day camp free, I had to fundraise a lot more to provide for the camp goers so they had no charge and no one was left behind and everybody was welcome. So by doing that, they donated, which was a huge help, and as you can see, they're kind of an ornery group over there, but, <laughs> and these were just some local farmers that were donating. So I still didn't have what I needed to make it completely ready to go. I needed more money. I needed to fundraise for my camp and get the word out more. So by doing that, I did a fundraising dinner, and this is the flyer I used. With the fundraising dinner, people had the opportunity to donate items to me. They could donate anything that we might use, crayons that they've had in their house that nobody uses anymore, um, empty Gatorade bottles, we used to make wind chimes. There's little objects like baby food jars, so different things that they could donate. And they filled my whole living room up with all these things that they donated at my camp at the fundraising dinner. So, and that was a huge help that was very rewarding. It was like a hug from the community because they wanted to help me. They wanted to know how they could make this camp more, um, make it better for the community. Because they knew that we haven't had something like this for a very long time. So this is my camp I created. It's K through six, so kindergarten and sixth grade, and it's nine to noon every Monday for five weeks. On my camp, it has themes for each day, and I had a presenter for each day. And um, it was at the middle school they provided, and that was of no charge, which was super helpful. And this is another way to um, contact me, and I place these around town and churches and at the school. This was the reg registration form I sent out, and also the liability form I sent out that I sent out May 1st to May 12th. On May 12th, I was shocked to see that I had 65 kids signed up for my camp in the small town of Villisca. So that was very, that was so cool to see that. I was so excited and encouraged to keep going and push on for this project. And this is the insurance policy that the day camp um, had to buy just to be covered and make sure everything went smoothly. Um, this is how it was organized. So, at 9, 15, uh, 9 to 9 15, the camp growers met in the gym. We had like a little opening ceremony activity that they did. And then we had activity, craft, or presenters. So I split them up in groups. I had K through first, second and third, fourth, fifth, and sixth in one group. So I had three groups, and then we had activity, craft, or presenters. So that was 45 minute time periods that they went to, which was a three station rotation. We also had a snack after the first session, after the first um, station that we had that the camp funded for as well. And then I had volunteers. People with those phone calls I heard about that called me after the radio station, people wanted to help with the camp. They're like, you're gonna need some help. 65 kids from you? Whew, that's gonna be hard. So they helped me. I had lots of kids from school that wanted to be a part of this project, so that was even more cool. So I had people for each age group that stuck with them through the five week time period. 
I also had um, adult volunteers that wanted to help, so I stuck them with crafts, presenter, activity, and snack. So this is one of the opening meetings we had. This is just a group of some of the kids. And as you can see, the um, day camp funds was enough that we could, all the volunteers could have a yellow camp t-shirt that could identify them as their group leader and just kept everything running smoothly. Registration binder. I am very, very proud of my registration binder. My registration binder um, is alphabetically, um, alph alphabetized with all the kids with their liability forms and registration forms. So if something were to happen, like mom didn't pick me up on time, so I just look it up and mom's just five blocks down the road. So it was just helpful to have that information on here. And this is where they checked in and out every day for our day camp. Week one, it's summertime. So the DNR park officer, Travis Paul, came in and talked about like animal food chain. And he brought animal pelts with it, which was like a very cool hands-on activity for the kids. They liked learning about the different animals and what they felt like. So that was kind of cool. And then this is one of the snack times we had. Um, and they enjoyed having a little snack because it's still early in the morning. Got to keep them focused and ready to go. So we designed backpacks. So these backpacks we had they were able to design and they could take it back and forth from day camp so like if the presenter gave them papers that day. They could take them home, they could put their crafts in there. And they had something they had from the Velisca day camp. Scavenger hunt. So if it was nice outside, that is where you found us. We t utilized the great weather we had this summer and they really enjoyed being outdoors and getting their hands dirty. Our scavenger hunt that day was we got to pick up grass, like who can pick up all these objects or go find them or what color of leaf this is. Can you identify this tree? So for each age group, we um, changed the level of the scavenger hunt. Week two was fire safety. I thought this was very important to have at our day camp and I was very lucky to have the fire department two blocks down. So we just walked to the fire department. We learned about fire safety. They got to try, try on some fire equipment. And not only, we had fire truck rides. Fire truck rides. When I was a kid, I would have loved to have fire truck rides. So what I put into this camp is what I wanted when I was a kid. I was a kid that went to daycare due to my parents working full time year round. So I didn't always get the opportunity to go have fire truck rides or go see my friends uh, once a week. So it was very important to me to make sure these kids got these experiences. And also the Velisca, was able, the Velisca Day Camp was able to fund for fire truck hats for all the kids. And they thought that was cool to be like a real fireman on fire trucks. Let's be healthy. It was very important to me that the kids um, knew how to stay active during the summer. Because it's a transition from the school year. And how they can eat healthy. So with these health professionals I brought in, they learned on how to eat healthy snacks throughout the summer. Cause because Mom and Dad aren't there mentoring what they're eating that day. And so they got to make their own snack. So hands on, they made their own snack and they ate it that day. And they thought that was cool that they made their snack. So that was very good for them to know how to do that. Same on activity day. We did a lot of physical activity on how to stay um, going throughout the summer. And also, they learned how to pot plants. Like you actually use soils, what one of the kids said, or this is dirt. What's this white stuff in there? So it was cool for them to have that kind of experience and learn about that stuff. Week four, mad scientist. So I was able to have the middle school science teacher come in and teach STEM and non-STEM activities through science. He was kind of a magician scientist, so we blew their minds with different science activities he did. And they got to do hands-on experiments like filling up a balloon with air using vinegar and baking soda, which they haven't done that before. And we also did uh, rocks that day. So they got to make a pet rock that they took home and they decorated like this little monster up in the corner. Week five of the day camp was um, county fair time. So I was lucky to have my own personal Southwest Valley FFA advisor, which is a club at the Southwest Valley High School. He came in and talked about agriculture and learned about animal science. He taught the kids about animal science. And not only, he brought the FFA members, and we had a petting zoo day. They brought in animals like bunny rabbits, ducks, baby calves, sheep, and goats. And we had fun conversations learning about them. Like, I led the duck part of that part, and 
I was like, do ducks lay eggs? And they're like, no. <laughs> yes, they do. Can we eat their eggs? No. Yes, we can. <laughs> so it was like mind blowing that ducks lay eggs, not just chickens. So they <laughs> learned that that day. So that was so much fun. And they also got to learn about the baby calf and that they're hungry. So they like to lick you and they had an in-town farm experience that not every kid gets to um, have that experience. Sustainability. I knew what I did to impact them. So I want to make sure I can impact this community every year. So the Villisca Betterment Association um, put my funds into their tax exempt free account and they are now in charge of the Villisca Day Camp and creating a director for each year to come. And they also, my mom was pleased about the storage shed they had. So the eight totes that I've been storing in her bedroom are now <laughs> in their storage shed. <laughs> and now I get to more of the meat and potatoes of this. I learned so much from Herbert Hoover on how he was a great humanitarian and how I can impact others. Like he said, children are our greatest natural resource. With that being said, we need to nurture them and bring out their greatest potential with learning and different activities because they are the passport to our future. So that's why it's great to impact them while they're young and be able to serve them. And I am proud to be an Uncommon student. I am honored to be an Uncommon student. And this experience has been a life-changing one. And it's eye-opened to how I can serve this community more. Thank you. insurance and, and student sign off forms how did you learn about these types of things so I work at a daycare so I work at, I'm great I've been with kids a lot and some of the things I knew about like liability and whatnot so like some of my permission forms say like can I take pictures of your child can your child ride the fire trucks this day so I know like what it's like when say this child can't go on the trip because their parents say no or you can't take pictures of them and being liable, like what if a kid bumps his knee? I want to make sure that we can provide for them in that. I mean, not saying that we get in trouble, but I want to make sure we're covered. And this will make it more sustainable having these policies. What sort of feedback did you get? Uh, how did you evaluate whether you'd achieved what you wanted to do? So, part, part of it thing that's impressive is they're going to do it next year. Yes. So why I know we're going to have this next year and why it's going to come for years to come is because at the check-in table each morning I check them in and out. Well when I did that I also checked how many kids were in that grade that day. I mean I get summer vacations, kids aren't going to come all the time, but my numbers never drop 55. And so having those numbers throughout the camp knew I was doing a good job that these kids wanted to come for five weeks worth of day camp. So I know with my numbers and my chart sheets that they continue to come because statistics showed that they wanted to be there, that these kids wanted to come to day camp, and they did it throughout the five weeks. I think you thought that if you got 36 in your write-up, that that would be successful, so you achieved what you were after. Yes, I over... Having 65 kids, Villisca's a very, very small town. Like, they don't have a chamber of commerce. Like, there's a lot of things they don't have in that town. And to have at least, say, 20 kids show up that I could deal with, that was enough for me to know that I'm serving them and making somebody's day. But not only serving 65 kids, I'm impacting 65 kids. That's awesome. That was rewarding for me. I have a question about the chicken and noodles <laughs> who made those so I also work at a bakery <laughs> I also work at a bakery so there was homemade noodles um, that we put into our chicken and noodles and our chicken um, was donated by one of the businesses that because they wanted to help so you didn't have to buy it that was my question yes yes how about the snacks were they donated or did you buy them 
Majority was bought by the Bliska Day Camp, but we did have some businesses want to donate juice that day, or they wanted to donate, oh, I want to donate these cracker packets this day, or um, animal crackers and stuff like that. So it was a variety of um, the camp providing and the community providing, because the community really wanted it, this camp. It was a hug from them because they were the ones like supporting me. Whatever I needed, they were the first ones there to help. You just answered my question or spoke to it a bit. That, that, that hug from the community really stuck out in your presentation. Those words were really powerful. And so, and you just were describing what this means to the, the town of Villisca. Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Oh, you're going to bring me down. Um, <laughs> I never really needed to ask for anything because this camp, this community, they needed this. They needed something for their youth because it's a very less fortunate town. So them wanting to help and them providing for everything was very, it was a hug. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. What was a day or an activity that didn't go as planned and what was something that maybe you had to do to adapt to make sure it was successful? Okay. Hmm. Well, I mean, when I had that petting zoo day, some toes got stepped on by that baby calf. But <laughs> um, we really didn't have too many issues ever. Um, I was a floater throughout the camp, so I had everybody set up that they could do everything, but I was there for if anything happened and checked on everybody. Um, when we did a craft one time, we did like water fireworks, so it was like oil and water that they did, and they dropped like food coloring in it. We, one of the glasses broke, and so like got everywhere, but then the kids that day really learned how to clean up food coloring, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty cool. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you.